I had a personal instance where I got pregnant again and I didn't realize I was pregnant. So I was doing all these events and stuff. And like, I felt like I started to miscarry during the event. Uh-huh. And so I felt very like, man, like, all right, I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna finish up whoever booked me. And then that's it. Like, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> Hey everyone, I have another special guest with me today, Christina. Thank you so much for attending this call. Just an FYI for anyone watching, Christina is a part of my group coaching program, probably like a CEO. These are usually the testimonials that I do. Christina, welcome. How are you? I am good. Thank you for having me, Justine. I really appreciate it. (laughs) You're welcome. All right, so I don't like to do long introductions. I like to just dive right in. Feel free to introduce who you are, what does your business do, and then we'll take it from okay. there. Yes, I am Christina, the owner and lead draping specialist for Intimate Event Draping, and I'm located in New York, and my services, I offer them throughout New York, um, as well as parts of New Jersey. So, Christina, you're like the first person that I've ever coached that has a pipe and drape business but I don't think it was that way when we first met so it was when, not <laughs> when I used to do these live workshops maybe I'll bring it back I don't know it was like a two-month workshop where I teach live every single week and Christina and a few other people jumped on it and they had such crazy results Tell me what was your business like um, even before joining the workshop, I got into this business as a party rental business. So I wanted to do everything. And so <laughs> <Don't be long. laughs> yeah, I wanted to do everything. So October, 2019 is when I incorporated my business, got the LLC and everything. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do my tables. I'm going to do chairs and you know, whatever else there is to rent. Right. And so I got some stuff from China, like, you know, I'm like getting my like pipe and drape pole. And the crazy thing is I really wasn't going to focus mainly on pipe and drape. I just knew that I was planning my husband's birthday party that December. So I'm like, okay, I'll use, reuse this stuff. And then I'll get like the tables and chairs and everything else. So I had already in my mind. And so um, registered the business. October was called Main Event Party Rentals. So I'm like, yes, this is the name. People will know I do party rentals. This is it. And then um, a little bit before my husband's birthday, I found out I was pregnant. And then like I set up for his birthday and I was like super exhausted, super tired. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do rentals. And I barely got through this birthday party, but we'll see. And then like COVID happened and I was just like, yeah, I'm probably not going to do <laughs> this at all. So like I took like a whole, basically like almost a year hiatus and Um, when I was like getting things ready and researching, I found your page and I was following you. I thought, cause I wanted to do balloons. I'm like, Oh, she teaches balloons on YouTube. This is great. It seems so like, you know, foolproof. She's got like the system. So I follow you, a couple of local people here that were like really big. Let me just see how I, you know, so I said, okay, get me tables, get me some chairs. And I even reached out to a couple of people and um, locally just to get some tips and advice and one of the people said oh well you know what exactly do you do and I'm like well my name is like made event party rentals like oh like I do rentals you know so it was like interesting that she said that so I was like all right maybe I need to do something you know better with my Instagram so I really didn't know how to promote on Instagram how to get any clients I didn't have any clients my only client really was my husband with his birthday party and that was it and then you had like a I don't know if it was a story or like a post or something you had and I and I saw you Mm -hmm. and I'm like she's teaching now and I'm like wow like when I was following her she was doing balloons now she's teaching I'm like I need to know what she knows I need to get into like whatever she's doing so then I dm'd you and I'll never forget the dm because when I dm'd you I was like I you know I told you I was all over the place I wanted to do party rentals and like you voice memoed me back and I was like she reached out to me and she voice memoed me like I thought that was so personal and I was like wow and then one of the things you said to me you said because I said I asked you I said do you think that I should do like balloons I said I'm not that great at it and one of the things you mentioned to me was if you don't love balloons you're it's going to get old fast or something to that Mm. effect and I like that you were so genuine and honest with because you could have said yeah you know this is my part of my coaching classes but your coaching wasn't just for 
um, balloons. It was for designers in the event industry, you know, period. And so you explained that to me. And I was like, I like her. Like, she's so genuine. She's so honest. She's so raw with it. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this, you know, this course. And that's basically where it started from there. And so once I started doing your course, then I started getting like your group coaching, actually. Um, that's how I started getting clients and you you know, help me see that I had to be on Instagram and I had to show a presence. I thought you just put your name up there and give a couple right. of pictures every now and again, and, and you're good. Clients, and right? <laughs> see that that's not what it was about. So, <laughs> right. wow, I love, I love it. I'm just so, I'm just so in love with how the journey unfolds. You know, what's so funny is like when I was trying to like just get to know who was following me, every time I would get a new follower, I would voice memo them. Now, mm-hmm. probably like, two out of 10 would respond no shade to anyone because I think I was on live the other time they were like <laughs> I'm the one who didn't respond to you so no shade. but the ones who did were so shocked that I literally voice memo and it it cracks me up because like I haven't changed right I'm I'm still mm-hmm. Justine little mm-hmm. Justine growing up college mm-hmm. version like so when I tell my sister like she's always like oh because you're famous and I'm like no I don't know but I was like yeah maybe I am <laughs> so that was an interesting journey Christina like I didn't know you even got pregnant as you were starting your business um <laughs> that, that's a lot yeah. to handle <laughs> with a little one but what other word challenges were you facing with your event business? I guess even before joining the workshop and before joining the group coaching? Um, just actually getting started. Um, Cause like I mentioned, I wasn't following anyone. So when I got back to and started getting on social media and seeing like the more lavish events. And of course, now that I know what I know, I follow these people. So I'm seeing more of that type of stuff on my, you know, po- on my feed. So um, I was just like, okay, what do I do? Like I, I, in New, I'm based in New York. So I felt, I felt like I had to do everything because if you don't offer everything, then you're not going to be able to compete with others. And people aren't going to watch your services because you're not a one-stop shop. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't understand that. So for me, it was like the mindset of not needing to do everything, getting more organized and knowing what I really wanted to do. Because when I did, I did a couple of table and share deliveries. And let me tell you, I hated it. <laughs> like it was, it, I mean, I like the customer service aspect of it and people being happy, but I didn't find as much joy in it. I think that's, that's pretty much a lot of people who watch my channel is that sometimes, especially in the beginning, you know, wherever they are in their journey now, but especially in the beginning, I think we all can relate like I was like if you guys look at my YouTube channel videos like I was doing everything too like picture frame centerpiece I was doing (laughs) reefs I was doing and then my husband's like um let's focus on one thing I'm like do you mean focus on one thing but there's a whole strategy I'm focusing on one thing Right. right you get clients and I think that um attributes to your success as soon as you condense your your business. And we'll talk about that because I'm getting ahead of myself. But a lot of people too have fears, right? And sometimes yeah. they are aware of it and then sometimes they're not. Right. And knowing your success now versus when you first started, because obviously I didn't had no idea what was going on back mm-hmm. then, you know, what were some of the fears that you had when you first started your business and how did you overcome them? Oh man, I had a lot of fears. Um one specific fear is starting it and not finishing because I have (laughs) I've done so many side hustles and (laughs) LED candles and um soy candles and I made the candles myself and didn't have any scent to them like it was just crazy and like I've done different ventures before and so this one specifically I always liked events in general because at my nine to five I was always enlisted to help with a baby shower or retirement or something. So I was always doing it. um, And I was always involved or even for like family functions. I always enjoyed doing it, but I don't, I don't think I ever thought of it as a business until closer to 2019. And so when I had like started plotting and drawing things out and figuring out a name and what I wanted to do, and then I like incorporated it and got the dot com and everything. And I'm like, okay, am I going to actually like stick with it this time? You know, that was like a mm. huge thing for me because I don't stick with things. Like that's just not my MO. I'm like a jack of all trades and master of none. That's just 
basically who I was. Um, because I, I just like the idea of just learning different things and knowing, because I, I, like I do research and I learn things and it's exciting. And then it's like, if it doesn't have the momentum still throughout, it's like, all right, it's hard. I, you know, I won't stick with it. So that's just the honest truth. And I think a lot of people have similar. I know I did with you, right? Because I was doing a lot of things, like you said, a little side hustle here, side hustle there. Mm -hmm. I never fully mastered it. And even to this day, I'm still condensing. So that way, like Party Legacy CEO, the group coaching is the only offer I'm technically offering, right? right? So I'm still overcoming those fears because it's a very real thing. And I think we, creative people, like you, I, and the people who follow the channel, they are so creative that they think that everything that they're good at is supposed to turn into a business. <laughs> when in actuality, the biggest key indicator of what you should turn things into a business is what you are known to do, right? right. Steve Harvey says it on this video. He always says, you don't know what your gift is? Well, I'm going to tell you. What is the thing that you do that takes the least amount of time and effort mm -hmm becomes an easy for you that's your right. gift right and we're multi-gift or multi-gifted mm -hmm. in multiple areas like I love to teach but I also love to create right, right. and what is what are people willing to pay that's right. your your million dollar business that is the business that you need to run with when it comes down to it draping an entire room for a wedding completely transforms the room yeah. right? a lot of people don't know that they think oh just balloons in the focal point no like can we focus on like these ugly walls that we can't paint, change, or do anything <laughs> with? Oh, Christina has a great business. They'll solve that problem. <laughs> so I love it. I love that. I love that you talked about those fears because I think it's very real. Mm. And, you know, I always love to talk about like the good part, right? The, 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 the beginning is always awesome, but let's really talk about and emphasize yeah. like on your wins. You've had some really great wins, I think in the two years that I've known you, I can't, or one year and a half year and a half you, right yeah, like it's crazy it's so crazy <laughs> it is crazy i can't believe it i'm like <laughs> even when i look at amber i'm like oh my god i know you for like two years like you're you're basically like we're friends we're you know what i mean like yeah. i know i'm still a coach but like no i we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> and i love that i love being with you all as your journey completely continues to grow and expand and scale. So yeah. we've ha talked about where you were. Let's talk about some wins. So what were some of the biggest wins you've had within your business over the time oh, when we were working together? <laughs> when we were working together in the very beginning, a huge win was finding out that I really liked draping. Like that was a huge win. And I found that out through the group coaching because even in the beginning, mm. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> even in the beginning you were like don't get inventory don't get so much inventory you know wait for your clients and I was just like yeah I already placed that order so <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> so I, just, I didn't listen all completely in the beginning oh and I paid and I paid for it so like anybody who's watching this when Justine tells you to do something just do it because it, it seems like everything that you mentioned that I did like like tweaked it or I didn't listen fully it always ended up biting me in the behind and I'm just like I should listen to dad going just see you know so <laughs> and that's okay that, <laughs> so that was one of the things like finding out that I really like draping and that I didn't want to do a bunch of a balloons I love balloons but I don't want to do them um finding out that I really like draping and finding that niche and narrowing it down because like I said here I felt like I had to offer more than just like who just does just draping like you know what I mean who just does that and so I was like okay she said you know find your niche narrow it down and I really do like it because when I drape it's like it's calming it's like it's just it's just my thing and I get in the zone and so when I started like showing up like you said show up for your business and posting more I got more traction and I had my very first event I'll never forget May of last year and it was a baby shower. And that was like my first full room draping. And it turned out so amazing. And so I started getting clients. And so I had an event in like um, May. And then I think I had an event, maybe June, July. I felt like I had an event every month of the summer of last year. Right. And I had clients like within... <clears throat> what, two months or a month and a half? And I was, that was like a huge win for me. Like, I was um, like, oh, this is, this stuff works, you know? So. 
it was it was a huge win for me. I had like I was getting clients. I was getting like people to pay me for draping. I was like, all right. Like wow. <laughs> and you didn't see that coming. Um, I and I love that. I love you. You know, if if anybody like watches this, they're like, Christina's pretty comical. So you kind of saw me laughing there because <laughs> she literally cracks me up. Like you are so you you humor me all the time with who you are and you're bubbly and friendly. And I absolutely love it. Um, when it comes to like any other wins, so like you, I love that you switched your your um your business and you switched your name at that too because it was I forgot it was like main event or you right. know then, it was still, it was still main event party rentals but I I my focus was just more on draping right yeah. and I love it that was- because niching down you can't niche down enough right mm-hmm. um and a lot of people think that oh if I do it all I'll make a lot of money no you're actually doing the opposite you're mm-hmm. confusing your clients and they don't know what you solve and if you don't solve their problems, they're not going to go to you. They're going to go to someone else, yeah. right? Not everybody could be a planner. Not everybody could be a decorator. Mm-hmm. But the fastest way to get clients in the door is to specifically focus on that one thing. One thing you get your no- your business known for. So I absolutely love that. Because I think once you decided that, right? And I guess listening mm-hmm. to my advice. And one thing I will say, right? Like disclaimer, I may say some, but I also know even as a teacher, as a former teacher, that it may not resonate right away. Whatever message is meant for you will be for you in the long run. And I always tell people that, I was like, I don't care that you go against what I say. You know what I mean? Because I think, although I'm a great teacher, I think I'm an awesome coach. I think I'm a great mentor. But the biggest teacher that you will ever learn from is through your own experience. Yeah. Because it literally keeps into your long memory. And you're like, dang, Justine told me to say that, to do that. And I didn't even do it. And every single time I go against, right. So now it makes it way easier to coach because now you're more receptive, but I can't coach anyone who is resistant. So you have to go through the, what you go through and then I'll meet you at the point where you're willing to listen. And I will Mm -hmm. still sit here and support you, right? I'm still going to be like, Christina, you you need to be doing this. Christina, you should do this. (laughs) Christina, I think you should do this along the way, even when you're not listening, because those are seeds that are being planted for your journey. Because they will f- be f- whatever sticks is meant for you. And that's what I always say. So sometimes I just know I remember specifically with your story that I told you, like, mm, I don't think you should do it all, which is crazy because another person, right, in a program, I might be like, yes, do customized backdrops, right? Yeah. Or do do those rentals. Yeah. And for some reason, I was like, yeah, no, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Call it a, God, get, a gift from God. I just like, I'm, I tapped it. <laughs> Oh, um, but I mean, what are the, what are some other wins? Cause you had some really good ones recently too. So, yeah. So, um, fast forward a little bit and then work towards, so last year I was like doing draping and I didn't, I still didn't, wasn't like great with pricing. So I was getting like draping events, but like, I was kind of still on the low end because, you know, teaching us about value-based pricing and stuff. And I, I still kind of wasn't really sure my whole value. And then with the whole inventory piece and stuff like that. So my first couple of events of the event, sorry, um, I did get clients and I was getting clients every month, but they were still on the lower end. So August was the event that was like my highest paying client. And I was like, <gasps> and it was an event planner and she was from Florida where you're from. She was, she came, she did her, um, someone's birthday uh um, not birthday uh baby shower mm-hmm. on a yacht what uh, not a yacht not a yacht it wasn't a yacht it was oh, a but boat. Say, i never heard this <laughs> not a yacht. i'm sorry it was a boat it was a boat it, like that went around new york oh, um nice. and so we did the baby shower and i draped multiple spaces in that um in that boat for that baby shower and i was and she's like a really known um like event planner out there and so i was like oh my because she she posted on her stories like any event drapers in new york and i was like well one you know and I didn't even think she was gonna hit me back I was just like all right you know I just put myself out there and she like responded and like I went and did measurements on the boat and I was like she paid me for my measurements you know she paid she paid me in full for my draping wow. and I was just like like, wow. <laughs> like I hit the jackpot of like you know like, so wow. it was oh, so was that was like a, that was like, a, that was like a really great like momentum for me and mm-hmm. I was just like this is like it you know so that was a great win and 
then like I had a, my first wedding and then I had another wedding and I was like, okay, I really love weddings. Like I love baby showers, but I really love weddings. So then that's where like it, start, it started taking more of a turn where I wanted to focus more on draping for weddings. And then even more recently, like I've been doing more weddings because my focus is more specific towards weddings and I rebranded, changed my name to Intimate Event Draping. And now I'm getting more DIY brides, event planners, event venues, which is who I cater to specifically. And like, they're paying me, you know, my worth now. And Mm -hmm. the difference between last year and this year is now I'm making more of a profit. So last year, yes, I was getting clients every month, but the profit was just like, and now like the profit, I'm seeing more of growth and profit in my business now. And then I had like a reel that recently went viral and I was just like, that's crazy. So how many this, views I, you got? It was like almost 12. Did it reach over 12,000? Um, it actually went to like 19,000. Oh I had 19,000 views and I think like 600 likes and a couple of forwards and saves and stuff. And I, cause when I, it's so crazy because I had like a couple going like the thousand, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So when I went to bed, that night, I was like, oh, is that three something? I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I'll reach four. You know, like maybe I'll get, maybe this will be my highest reel, 4,000, you know? So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I went to bed and I woke up and it was at 12. I was like, this can't be right. So I like, uh, I shut my phone off and shut it back off. I was like, maybe it's a ditch <laughs> on Instagram. Like, something must be wrong. Because. <laughs> <laughs> then I looked up like 12,000 again. And then I looked at the saves and I was just like, oh. and I was like, babe, I went viral. And I'm like, I got to post it on like a group. And, so, and like, I know you were saying that, like, you know, it's not about the likes. It's not about, and it's, and it's true. But like, just the fact that I got that much traction and exposure, I was just like, oh, that's like, I keep oh, all the time. But like, <laughs> but it's, it's true. Like, that's how I legitimately feel like this is like crazy, you know? So crazy good, but you know. I told, and I told you, um, and I tell everyone, you know, in my program, obviously we talk about content, creating content, Mm -hmm. content marketing. And so this might be the title for this video to go (laughs) from maybe, because some people celebrate, they don't even reach a couple of thousand, right? So we kind of take that for granted, like, oh, it's not the 10 point, 20 point, you know, whatever, whatever. that looks better. Um, But I always tell my designers in every ounce of coaching since the beginning is that our views are great but it doesn't pay the bills, right? Our views yeah. are just validation that you're moving in the right direction, right? right? We're more focused on what is, how are you selling, who you're selling to, and how do we increase your revenue and profit? Because when you're profitable, now you can sustain this lifestyle that matches who you are, where you want to be, where you don't have to focus on, you know, another income and you can just kind of let that go. Because that's where, that's what the real wins are. And speaking, like, do you have any numbers to share? Like, you know, I know that's yeah. usually what sticks. Like, what was your cheapest offer versus maybe your most <laughs> expensive? So when I first started and um, I did a wedding, like my first, it was a throne chair, a backdrop. So, uh, so a throne chair with a backdrop, and then it was like an entryway to a tent. And that was um, $600. Okay. And like my full room draping, I charged the same. I think, no, I'm lying. I think I charged, I added, added $50 onto that. So that was like six fifty. <laughs> and I was just like, now I'm thinking like, girl. <laughs> and that's crazy, Christina, because people don't, like some people don't even charge that much starting, right? Yeah. Like okay. I charged $85 for my balloon garlands when I first started. That's true. That's true. That's true. So to start at 600 <laughs> oh my gosh but yes go ahead keep going I'll but knowing you. what I know now it's right. like you know what I mean like 600 for a whole room like it's <laughs> crazy you know what I mean <laughs> 650 for a whole room that's crazy mm-hmm. so like my highest playing client to date now is 2300 wow just like <gasps> for one client 2300 yeah, and you know what I, so it's funny because I did Linda's testimonial and within a month later, she booked a 5,000, almost a $5,000 client. I told people, I was like, I really have to like start getting an update because something happens after these videos. And like, <laughs> so I won't be surprised if you're like, oh, by the way, I just booked like a 5,000, $8,000. I'm like, what? We just put in your ready. Bring it on. <laughs> 
That is amazing, Christina. A lot of people don't know the grit and grime that goes on behind the scenes. Even I don't know it all. But to know that you still continue to push forward, that you still continue to be committed, even when life smacked you like upside down and you still kept going. (laughs) It did. It did smack me. I had a personal instance where I got pregnant again and I didn't realize I was pregnant. So I was doing all these events and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I felt like I started to miscarry during the event. And so I felt very like, man, like, all right, I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna finish up whoever booked me. And then that's it. Like, I'm going to take a break. So I did go through like a little period of kind of being a little resentful, even though, you know, like from the doctors and science, like that's not what caused it, but you kind of like, you, you reason like, okay, well, since I don't have a real reason, and since I was working so crazy and like you, you make it like you you up, like you talk about the upper limit, you like, Mm. you find reasons to stop or, you know, quit and, and, and halt yourself. And so I was just like, all right, whoever gave me a deposit, I'm going to, you know, finish throughout the year, but then that's it. So I wasn't posting as much. And I saw, I saw the difference between when I was actively posted and active in my business, but you know, obviously I went through that personal instance and it, it bothered me for a little while. And then like I, for the new year, I was like, okay, but I'm regrouping, getting myself together. And here I am today. So, and it wasn't just that, like it was, and it's still like, I constantly work on it the mindset thing. Like, you know, Mm. I grew up in a very religious, um, really strict religious household. So it was always money is the root of evil. And, you know, money, you know, you're not supposed to love money and idolize money and all those things. So that was like firmly embedded in my brain. And it's just like getting that out and knowing that I'm deserving, Mm. you know, of earning and, you know, worthy of people paying me my worth. Like you taught me that. Like I honestly would not have been as successful without listening to you and getting your coaching and getting your guidance. First of all, I would never been posting on Instagram. Oop, like oop, show my face, do I? Like, I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? Like I'm not doing that. That's mm-hmm. not who I am. That's not what I know. And you know, you you coached me and you molded me to see like this is this is how you get success. This is how you get people to know what you do and who you are. You have to talk about it. You know, this is why they follow you. It's okay to post your business because that's why people follow. You say it all the time. That's why people follow Nike. That's why mm-hmm. people do this. And it's like I have to remember that this is I'm a business like Nike. It will not mm-hmm. you know in the same field, but you know what I mean. Like I am a business, <laughs> and so I have to be consistent. And so like that whole mindset thing was a huge thing for me, you know, and even still to this day, I have to like shake myself up and be like, all right, you gotta, you know, and it's, it's a constant, it's a constant thing that you have to, you know, remind yourself that you are worthy. And, you know, you listen to, I, for me, I listen to my motivational speakers and I read my books and, you know, just try to stay on top of it. Cause this year for me is, is different because, you know, I'm really more focused, you know, so. Yeah. And I didn't think you would share that, but I am so happy you did because, you know, a lot of the people that follow me are women, they're moms, they have nine to fives. Mm -hmm. Um, They have to take care of their household, like, you know, to hear someone and to see. So what happened was even behind the scenes on my end, Christina was Mm kind of silent. And Mm -hmm. whenever someone's silent, like, you know, I give them the time and space, but I always do a little check-in just from time to time, see how you're doing see yeah. what's going on because I know silence is a loud speaker for me right. and so when you admitted that um I don't know if you admitted it in a group call or a person it was a group call it was a group call, call. Yeah. yeah yeah and so like literally almost brought me to tears because I had no idea not to say I was like oh why are you ghosting me like I would never say that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I knew something something was going on and again to see that you overcame and that's a very dark time Right. And Mm -hmm. you were religious, knowing or going against like what is purposeful, what is meant to be like truly Mm -hmm. stepping in faith to know, like, I know your ego is trying to make logic and blame your business, but Mm -hmm. you're Mm -hmm. still here stronger than ever. And, you know, people who have kids understand that I don't I have little nephews and I'm working on building my family, but I've always had such a a beautiful connection with all kids. That's why I became a teacher. So I was working with them for, you know, since I was like 17 years old. And, you know, I can't imagine, you know, what people go through when it comes to something like that. Um, But I know being a mother is hard because I watched my my younger sister go through it. So 
kudos to you and kudos to all the moms out there that are trying to build this business because let me tell y'all it's always going to be a challenge right it, it, yeah. even where you are you get those big wins there's something else that happens and mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. long as you stick with it I think you know pushing through those challenges is definitely an inspiring story yeah. um so let's kind of like talk about what is the secret for you because you kind of said some tips right especially with like the whole Instagram stuff what are some yeah. secrets to gaining clients um for your event business um for me now it's just the consistency like it's the consistency like you always used to say and you still say it, show up for your business when I don't show up for my, when I wasn't showing up for my business I didn't have any clients like that's just <laughs> that's just what it is like because people like they're not going to know you and they're not going to trust you if you're posting once whenever once a month it's like okay well I'm going to give somebody my money right. and you know like they're not consistent like are they going to take my money and disappear like they do on their Instagram, you know? So it's like the same feeling. So I was like, okay, this is what she's saying makes sense. And then it's like, oh, you know, I got the bait. Like, well, he's not a baby, he's a toddler now. It's like, okay, he's running around here, but I'm going to find time. And it's like, okay, you just got to do it. Like if you want it enough, you just have to do it. And, and that's what I am have realized and continue to realize, like I want it bad enough. So I just have to get it done. So whether I get it done at 12 a.m. in the morning or 12 p.m. in the afternoon when he's at daycare, then I'm going to mm -hmm. do what I got to do. So consistency for me is key um, because now I'm starting to get more traction. And like I mentioned, more event planners are referring me and event venue owners. So that's great. Like I'm very, really thankful that like people are like really like at my work and like referring me and they're like, yeah, here's Christine. I'm like, all right, like, thank you. So I really appreciate that. Um, and then just talking about my business more, like my husband's been referring people, you know, pass out my business cards to um, my sister-in-law. Like I have like a really supportive folks around me, you know, so that's helpful too. And then working on my mindset is a huge thing because the energy that I put out there is what I'm going to get back. So me consistently being mindful of what I'm saying to myself and how I'm feeling about myself and how I'm feeling about my business is a huge thing too. So that's like an everyday thing is probably going to be a thing for me forever, you mm -hmm. know, because of these deep embedded things that I've learned, but it is what it is until I can't learn it, unlearn it anymore. I'm going to just have to keep doing it. So, right. And I love that. And, you know, word of mouth, I think is the most powerful marketing tool you can have. And if it works, continue to like whatever's working on your end I always tell um Amber was another one too she was just like list a time lapse video seemed to work for me um yeah. and I just keep doing that I was like yes don't reinvent the wheel what you do what works and do it again yeah. and again yeah. and again right Grant Cardone has the 10x rule figure out how to do it the first time and then do it 10 more times yeah. so that's the whole point uh when it comes especially with marketing it works yeah. continue to do it and don't you know you can reinvent yourself but go back if it doesn't work when you tried something new go back to what worked and continue to do that as well so I love that and I know we talked about like a lot of the challenges that came into your into your business and into your world personally and professionally um, what were some tough lessons that you had to learn in order to, to get your success to be where you are listen one of them listen to you <laughs> <laughs> like seriously like like I, I promise, like, and it's not like a paid advertisement or anything. Right, like that, no, like, I don't pay people. <laughs> she, does, she definitely doesn't pay us. But, like, everything she tells you to do, like, listen. And even if you stray, like, a little bit, just come right back. Because, like, she she has the gems. Uh, she, she she knows what she's doing. Just, right. just saying. I think but, I'm um, for God. <laughs> everything that you told me to do and I listened to has helped me. I don't know. Like, when I don't listen, it just doesn't work. I don't right. Know. And I, and I appreciate that too. And I won't sit here and be like, oh yeah, you should listen to me. Like, I think I allow people to have a self-realization and develop mm -hmm. their own way in the way that serves them, mm -hmm. you know? And even if it takes you a year, if it takes you six months, some, some people get results right away. It's on you. Everybody's journey is so unique to them. And yes. I'm okay with that, right? I just know whenever I have an intuition, which after this call, I'm going to be telling Christina something because I can't get it off my head, right? <laughs> I tap in and they always say like, you know, psychics and mediums have this thing where they talk to the dead or whatever, you know, whatever. Right. It's such a hu huge intuition, intuitive hit 
that I'm like, if I don't say it, it'll just keep going on in my brain. Like, tell her, tell her, tell her. Oh, you should yeah. do it. But sometimes even in the coaching calls, I'll just say, hey, Christine, you should try this, hearing it. And then all of a sudden it's completely, like I always tell people, I used to black out when I was a teacher because I never remembered. But mm. it's not really blacking out. It's about tapping into something that is a gift of mine to right. help someone else's journey. Like that, I think that's my pure gift is the gift of tongue to know, hey, and then when it resonates and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I did not see that come. I didn't know that helped yeah. you. Honestly, like every advice you've given me as far as like, you know, working on your mindset, as far as, you know, showing up for your business. And what does that mean? Show up for your business. That means consistently posting. That means doing your market research, finding out what your clients like, doing polls, things like that. I know one of the other major things you told me, especially in the beginning, like don't buy things that you like. You have to find out what your clients like. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, but how do you do that? Like, I don't right. know what they like, you know, and you know, in the and I, and I never forget this because it's been, a, it took me like a year and a half to use this purple drape that I bought in the very beginning when I didn't listen to you and I got it. And I was just like, and it was so crazy because I said to myself, maybe about two months ago, I'm like, dang, I still ain't use this purple drape that Justine said, don't just be buying stuff, just be buying stuff because you like it. And I like purple. So I said, I'm going to get purple. They're going to love it. And like I did like a little setup with the purple. Nobody's bit until like a year and a half later with the purple drapes. So it's just like, don't get inventory that, you know, you, you that you like. You have to survey your your um, your audience, get to know who your audience is. And yeah. And I think that kind of like rolls into, you know, my next question is like, how has having a mentor help you? And before you answer, it's so like, you know, I'm going to hit an objection that I always hear, right? A lot of people know that I give a lot away for free, right? Mm -hmm. I don't really give you everything. I give you what serves you at the point in what you're at in your business. Yeah. And in hopes that I know where you are, here's some quick wins. And if you can, if you follow me across this bridge, you can end up with consistent revenue every single month, right? right. For you desire, if you desire 5k months, we can get you there if you desire 1k month and you know there's some people and even in our program they just want to keep it as a side hustle I mean right. I I think you're destined for more right because that's right. why we're aligned but that's okay too and most people will not invest right they'll go on these YouTube videos they'll watch every single DIY tutorial mm -hmm. but I'm letting you know right now the millionaires the six figures seven figures they do mm -hmm. not learn from free content, right? Yeah. Whether it's paying me, whether it's paying a mentor, whether it's paying a course, like you mm -hmm. all always somewhere to learn about draping, like mm -hmm. that's all part of it too. So mm -hmm. how has like, not just with me, I guess you can say, but investing in yourself, maybe that should be a different question. How mm -hmm. has investing in yourself and your business helped you in the long run? It's helped me to take it serious, mm -hmm. right? Like if we go back to what I was saying before, like I never stuck with anything. And part of why I might not have stuck with it is because maybe I didn't take it as seriously as I thought I did. Me paying to learn more draping techniques, me paying for a mentor and a coach, like I'm paying my money. So I'm going to show up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what you're telling me to do. Um, maybe not always right, but <laughs> straight a little bit, but like for the most part, I'm listening to what you're telling me. And then it does something to your mind. And your psyche and it's just like okay like this is a real business this is where i, I want to scale it i want to grow it so you have to listen to what's being taught and what's being told to you i would not be here doing this video today if i didn't have a mentor right. like you encouraged me to want to learn those other draping techniques that i went down south to learn. like i saw the in, the importance of it i saw the value of it so that way i can provide a better service to my clients in that way you know generate more clients and generate more exposures you know they they say in the in uh it's a bible verse faith without works is dead so mm -hmm. you have to put in the works you have to put in the work you can't just say oh god oh universe i want this but then you're not taking it seriously enough to do the work you have to do the work and then he'll meet you yeah the rest of the way so i love that and i love that you're honest about that because i think because i've done things for free too right i've done things even coaching for free mm -hmm. and the most valuable 
people or clients, obviously there's always like, for me, if I'm doing something, if I get something for free and it's a high value, I'm going to pay attention like and do everything they say because mm-hmm. this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and take it up. But yeah. at the same time, when I've also invested, right, you actually will show up right? Mm-hmm. Because you're not going to waste this money. Uh, and this is why like, I got rid of Design and Juice Society because people were paying $25 a month, but they weren't showing up. Mm-hmm. They weren't doing the work because it's a low value mm-hmm. thing because it costs less. Something that's high value is going to be paid, t- taken care of, right? You get mm-hmm. a high, very, very expensive, lavish purse, you're going to use it. You're mm-hmm. not going to sit here and let it, you know, build up dust in the closet, right? Yes. But if you got a, a purse from Ross, you probably be like, okay, I'm just going to give this to Google. <laughs> I didn't even use it. I bought this just because I was sad in the moment, whatever. Right? right. But that's, that's the same thing. And the notion people see such high value in education when it comes to getting a degree, mm-hmm. but when I am a fraction of the cost of a degree, but mm-hmm. I will actually help you make money. That is mm-hmm. wild to me. Right. Because yeah that's the value in it it's like I don't cost as much as a college course I used to always be watching free this free that I watch all the YouTube channels everybody watched Tyra the Perez project Anastasia Mm -hmm. um who else uh uh sharp designs by Lakeisha like I watched them all right I watched them all but it wasn't until I invested in myself where I started to really make the money yeah loving that you say that too because you know, again, I'm not convincing everybody on here. I know my audience isn't for everyone. My program is there for everyone. But the, mm-hmm. for the one who's like t- tittering between should I or should not? Yes, I'm talking to you. You, you, <laughs> invest in yourself. <laughs> Let's kind of go into my last question and to kind of close out this um, beautiful session that we had is like, what advice would you share someone? I, and, you know, I'm pivoting YouTube too. So like anybody who watches this is going to see a certain content shift so it's not about giving advice for someone who's just getting started I want you to give advice to the person who is getting clients but they're just not getting consistent revenue right right? like something like who you were you you were getting a client or two right but now you're striving and thriving so -hmm. what advice would you share with someone who's getting who's getting those clients but needs to get more revenue in the door um one thing that I learned well, a couple of things um, that I learned from you, that I learned from like the, a lot of the books that I've been reading, the upper, um, the big leap, um, you're a bad, at, bad day at making money. I don't know if people want to hear the curse part, but <laughs> <laughs> you have to continue to work on yourself, like constantly. You have to constantly work on yourself. Like if you really want your business, if you want to get more clients consistently, if you want to make more money, more of a profit, you have to continue to work on yourself and figure and find out like what's like preventing you, like find out what's preventing you from being as successful as you want to be. I know for myself, mindset is a huge thing. And that's why I said before, like, that's going to always be my constant until I get it right. So for me every day, I'm listening to my audible, like something like I'm listening to you're a bad day at making money so that's what I'm listening to right now after that it might be millionaire mindset but like every day like you have to you have to constantly work on and deprogram yourself Mm. for whatever is your issue so it might be mindset and it might be um in a part of that mindset it might be several things like it might be around money it might be about like okay how do you feel about yourself you know your self-worth so like it might be a couple of things in your mindset that you have to work on that's gonna sh- that that's the reason why you're not getting what you want to get the results in your business so you have to do it every day you have to be just as consistent about working on you as you're working on your business I love that I love that I love that and you're giving me an idea of a lesson to add probably in part of like CEO and probably be out before this testimonial <laughs> is like I you know it's funny that you say that because I agree I, and I always tell like people who book me with one-on-one the first thing to understand is that wealth is a mindset right mm-hmm. it's a complete mindset just like being poor is a mindset it is mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. it's whatever narrative that is embedded in your subconscious that is what the result of your reality is unfortunately mm-hmm. You're equal to be like, no, it's not. Like, I didn't sign up for this. Da, da, da. Well, mm-hmm. you keep complaining. You keep talking about negative things and you're always gossiping. Yes, that's exactly what you get, 
or I just mm-hmm. went on Instagram live too yesterday. Um, and I kept it on my page about overcoming and getting clients because it's not about, right. It's all, it's really about you. It starts with you. And when I had to learn that deprogramming, I stopped listening to certain music, not to say music is bad, but it will, it speaks mm-hmm. to your subconscious. It mm-hmm. speaks to your subconscious. So like, I used to be very intentional with what mm-hmm. I was playing in my ears. So now mm-hmm. I go on walks, I listen to podcasts, I read books. Like I'm always absorbing so much mm-hmm. every single day because that's mm-hmm. how bad I want things to change in my reality. Mm-hmm. Christina, you can have 10K if you wanted to, right? And we're going to work on that too. <laughs> yes, we are. We, we definitely are. Future testimonial out here. <laughs> right? You can have it and it's, it's, it's available for you. So I'm loving that. And that's, it's available for anyone. Yeah. right a millionaires I remember this one girl and I read you are a bad you know a <laughs> of that book I read it I love it minutes. I feel like she's speaking to me right like I, the, the way she writes in words like I have the the, the physical book but I have the audio because I'm like always doing stuff yeah, so I said yeah. let me just listen to it too but like she's so like writing to me like I thought yes. like she's writing to me I right love it. that's how I feel some <laughs> books I just feel like that another person is Amanda Francis so you'll love Amanda Francis yeah um, rich as you know and she has the f but like her <laughs> book spoke to me she was and yeah. she was a faith-based Christian raised religious girl mm-hmm. country girl right and she, she's sitting out here cursing up a storm <laughs> right so and because she de- debunks the myths about money and right mm. and re- how religion like you really love it christina actually i recommend that because she talks about how the religion shaped who she was yeah. and it wasn't true it wasn't yeah. like i didn't grow up in the yeah. church i have my own spiritual journey so i always say i'm not too religious i really don't know anything about the bible i just know <laughs> i just don't know where <laughs> But spirituality wise, I'm connected with God. I have a huge, huge relationship with him and my faith and what he delivers in my life and what I am able to help other people. But her book, Amanda France, she has a pocket, she has YouTube. I am not affiliate, but please, anybody who wants to, I love this. Oh my God, what a great call. Like, amazing. I knew you were going to blow me away. Just didn't realize how much fun I was. I'm silly, I can't with you. Um, well, Christina, thank you so much for thank doing you. not just this interview, but inspiring other people who are like you, who are on the similar journey and to know what's possible and how this is not going to be the end, right? This is the beginning and you're going to continue to strive. And I speak a tons of blessings over you and anyone else who watches this. Um, I love Christina because I love that you weren't just doing balloons, right? I, I have a lot of big following because of the balloon. Um, but I love, I serve everybody in the event space besides mm-hmm. clients, like mm-hmm. and old decorators. So I love how you have a different story. You have a different journey and you have a different niche within the industry and you still make it work. So love Thank that. You. Thank you so much for all your help. Aww. I really appreciate it so much. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. If something resonated, feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know what was your biggest takeaway when it comes to Christina's journey because she is an amazing person to be with. I love coaching her and I love seeing her business grow. So feel free to let me know if you're interested in Party Legacy. Y'all. I'll leave some links down below and or you can just DM me on Instagram. Say, hey, I'm ready. And even if you're not, you know, let me know and we'll walk through to see if it's a good fit. I don't just put everybody in this program. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so, but I love to see everybody win when they do join. All right. Well, until the next time, Christina, we might have an update late and maybe next year. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, definitely. Bye. Bye.